So welcome to the fitting guide for the Corning Sclera lens. The Corning Sclera lens is a 14.5mm gas perm. So this is quite different for and quite new for a lot of optometrists. The reason for it is it takes the, the prescription correction that we've got with gas perm lenses where we can correct high powers, lots of astigmatism stably, but it combines them with the comfort that we get with a soft contact lens. So these lenses are immediately comfortable from the moment that they're inserted. This makes them a good option for full-time wear, but also for occasional wear. Because they're a gas perm lens, a lot of patients find these lenses easier to handle compared to soft lenses. This is what it looks like. You can see it looks very much like a soft contact lens, but it's just made out of a gas perm material. And when we place it on the eye, it also looks very much like a soft contact lens. The edge of the lens clearing the limbus uh, and, and being visible just on the edge of the, on the, the border of the sclera. The parameter range that we've got is very large. We've got from, for regular eyes, the, the standard cornea sclera lens, we've got from 6.9 up to 8.5 and 0.10 steps. We can do one millimeter difference between the meridians. That gives us a, a opportunity to correct pretty much all toric corneas. The designs can be either spherical, bitoric or front surface toric. There's one fixed diameter because with these lenses we're fitting the, the sag of the eye and if we change diameter it has a significant effect on the fit. So it's not possible to change diameters, you just stick with the, the one diameter which suits, suits all eyes. The power range goes from plus 20 to minus 30 and 7 doctors of sill correction. There's also edge lift changes that we can make and we've got plus to minus 4 steps with the edge lift. And this is a daily wear annual replacement lens supplied in Boston XO. So the geometry, we've got two zones of the lens. We've got a central, but be the BOZR zone, which is a 10 millimeter diameter. And we're going to assess that just like we would do a 10 millimeter gas perm lens. And then beyond that, we've got the edge lift zone. And that goes from 10 to 14 and a half. With regular eyes, there's a relationship between the, the BOZR and the edge lift. So we see with very flat eyes, they tend to have flatter, need flatter edge lifts. And with steeper BOZRs, they need steeper edge lifts. And the geometry automatically corrects for that. But within each base curve, sometimes to tailor the fit, we're gonna to need to alter the edge lift. So we get the base curve fitting correctly, and then we can either do minus edge lift or plus edge lift to get an optimum fit. And these edge lift changes are just done in step changes, plus and minus one. So to to fit your patient, if you've got a patient with uh, keratometry readings of less than 0.35, you're probably going to fit with a spherical lens. And this would be best done through a fitting set so that you can place one lens on the eye, alter the fit and see, get the result from that straight away without having to order a new lens and wait for a new lens to come in. Your initial lens selection should be based on mean K, put the lens on the eye and then assess as we're going to discuss in a second. For corneas where there's toricity greater than 0.35 mil, we would probably want to supply an empirical lens uh, supplied from K's and RX. Trying a spherical lens on a toric cornea will usually just result in discomfort, and if this is the patient's first experience of the lens, it'll, it'll discourage them from, uh, from what the lens is actually going to be achieved, because they are very comfortable when they're fitted correctly. There's insertion removal videos on our website, but uh, to insert the lens, we just want to fill the lens with multi-purpose solution and have the patient and place it onto the patient's eye with the patient looking down. Removal is usually done with a contact lens sucker, but it can also be done with a, with a sort of lid pinch technique. We assess the lens with slit lamp assessment, ideally with a yellow filter. Um, and we're also going to use another technique, which is to get the patient to tell us the comfort of the lens. This is a very reliable way of uh, working out whether we've got an acceptable fit or not. So this slit lamp assessment, we want to put the lens into the eye first of all, and then we want to instill the fluorescein. We're going to use low magnification 10 or 16 times with a, with a yellow filter. The first aspect that we're going to consider is the BOZR of the lens, the base curve. And uh, this we're going to use to assess a bit like a corneal lens. So we ignore what's going on on the edge of the lens and we look centrally at this 10 millimeter zone. And you can see that this resembles a corneal GP. We've got alignment centrally going to what would be an edge lift. In this case, it's limbal clearance. So this is an optimum fit. And this wants to be the case in both the flat and the steep meridians of the lens if there's toricity there. So alignment centrally going to limbal clearance at the edge of this 10 mil zone. 
The edge lift, we want to make sure there's either visible edge lift or alignment. Now the fact that we put the lines into the eye first and then we've installed fluorazine means that we've got a tear pump. So there is tear exchange going on between underneath the contact lens. So we haven't got a lens that's bound and suckered on and too tight. There's a good image because we can see that uh, we've got a difference between the left hand side, the temporal side of the foot and the nasal side. And this is fairly typical to have this small difference between different areas of the sclera. On the left, we've got a visible edge lift. On the right, we've got alignment. Some patients will tolerate a bit more edge lift, other patients will not. This is where we then go on to, to use the patient's assessment. Another useful technique is just to indent the sclera very gently with your fingertip. And you're looking for the fluorescein pattern to change under the edge of the contact lens. So this will show that the lens if you think it's in alignment with the sclera, it's not actually bearing any weight on the sclera. So it should just, the fluorescein pattern should get brighter with a very gentle indentation. This is not a push-up test. We're not trying to dislocate the lens in any way. Moving on to patient comfort. This is just simply done by asking the patient how they would score the comfort of the lens out of 10. Satisfaction surveys show that seven out of 10 is acceptable uh, and less than seven out of 10 is generally unacceptable. Patients will adapt to comfort. Uh, as they would with corneal lenses, but uh, we want to have the patient comfortable with the lenses from the moment they're inserted. So we're looking for a score of seven out of 10. Once we've got an optimum fit, we can see the lens is very stable on the eye. And this means it's an ideal lens for sporting activities, anything higher, uh, higher impact activities, and things that, that uh, corneal gas perm lenses might not be suitable for. Another useful technique is to use a very narrow beam from your slit lamp and we're looking for the tear lens. So we want this will show us if we've got clearance over the limbus or if it's a regular cornea patient's clearance over the edge of a graft or over the edge of a cone. Sometimes the, the fluorescein just bounces back from the front surface of the lens. So this lets us see if we actually have a tear lens. So a narrow beam offset your viewing system. The beam should be perpendicular to the cornea and to the lens and you're looking for the, the, the green glow of a, the tear lens in between the contact lens and the cornea. So to summarize the fit, the base curve assessment, we're looking for alignment with limbo clearance and the base curve would be altered and uh, either flat or steeper to, to correct this. And then we're looking for the edge lift of the lens to provide us with a small edge lift or alignment with the cornea, although there should be tear exchange and the patient should also find the lens comfortable, giving it an a indication of seven out of 10 or more. So if we have a, a non-optimum fit, we have a flat fit, you can see that the lens has a large edge lift. We've also got hard touch, so a very sharp demarcation between the central alignment and the limbal clearance. Generally, the patients will find this lens, they'll be more edge aware of this lens as well, so the comfort will not be as good. So if you saw a lens like this, you would select a base curve steeper by 0.2 and then reassess. Opposite to that, if we have a steep fit, you can see that we've got central pulling. This central pulling will possibly provide a little bit of instability after blink and also tear debris can get trapped in the visual axis and can cause the vision to, to grease up after wear. Uh, so if you saw a fit like this, you'd want to flatten the base curve by 0.2 millimetres. Base curve changes uh, really need to go in 0.2 millimeter steps. And the same way with soft lenses, we don't work in 0.1 mil steps. We tend to go from an 8.4 to an 8.8. Or, uh, with these lenses, 0.2 millimeters gives you a clinically significant difference in fitting pattern. And you can see that for a 0.2 millimeter step change, we get a, a change to the sag of 60 microns. So a 7.9 going to a 7.7 will give about 60 micron side change and 7.7 down to a 7.5 will do the same. Now our edge lift changes are also in around about 60 micron changes for each step change. So this means that we can alter the fit but keep the overall sag of the lens the same. So in this image on the left, we've got no limbo clearance with this fit. So the lens and the cornea are very well aligned. So in this case, we would want to fit a flatter base curve, but the patient finds the lens comfortable. We've got tear exchange, so we want to keep this, the overall sag of the lens the same. So in this case where we have a 7.5, we 
we would want to go to a 7, 7, but we'd want a minus one edge lift so that the sag of the lens stayed the same. And that would change the fit from the, the overall alignment fit to the optimum fit with the limbal clearance as shown. Once we've got our optimum fit, it's just a matter of doing our over fraction. With spherical lenses, you're just going to do a spherical over fraction and uh, in order the power, of course, if you've got over a fraction of plus or greater than plus or minus four, you're going to want to correct for back vertex distance. If you've got a large cylinder over a fraction and you've got a spherical lens, then you're going to need to go for a front surface toric and you would just supply the over a fraction and we would supply a lens for you. If you've got a toric lens, there's a good toric GP over a fraction video you can watch to, to understand how to do your over fraction with that. Or you can supply us with the, the form that goes out with all toric lenses that allows us to help you design the next lens correctly for the patient. So the parameters we need, well if we look at this right eye parameter, all we need are the base curve and the power if the lens is a standard fit. Uh, if we look at the toric lens we can see we need a base curve in both the flat and the steep meridians and you can also alter the edge lift, this could be done on a spherical or on a toric, it can be done in either meridian and we need to have powers in the flat and the steep. Again the initial lens selection can be done just by um, K's and RX and we would supply you with the, with the correct lens to start with, or a good starting point lens. Some tips for fitting, if you're not used to ha handling trial lenses, because they're still dry they're very prone to picking up grease from your fingers and from the tear film, so it's good to give them a, a clean with topo care which is an alcohol based cleaner before you insert them. Now you need to clean with topo care, you want to thoroughly rinse topo care off because it does irritate the eye if you get any in the eye. Rinse it off with either water or saline. You're then going to coat the lens with a soft lens multi-purpose solution and insert. And then you're going to instill your fluorine and try your best not to touch a dry lens with a dry finger. Patient care is done with Everclean, which is a non-surfactant cleaning system. So this is a peroxide system. The larger diameter gas perm lenses get, the surface get, the qualities get affected if you use a surfactant cleaner. So try to use the non-surfactant cleaner. The Everclean is the, is the all that's required for cleaning and storage. And then insertion is from a soft lens multi-purpose solution, like complete. A lot of patients that have dropped out of soft contact lenses have often got poor tear quality and are suffering from dryness issues. These lenses are not a cure for a dry eye, but because they can be worn without disposing of the lenses for a whole year, a lot of patients find these more suitable for uh, contact, occasional contact lens wear than soft lenses. Dry eye issues are still going to become an issue, so if you have poor wetting, it could be that you've got lens contamination, so the lenses should be thoroughly cleaned, uh, but it could also be just be too poor, poor, poor tear quality or my bulbing gland dysfunction. So the dry eye treatment and lens cleanliness is going to be the, the only way to manage this issue. Trapped debris, you can see that here over the, the pupil we've got some mucin trapped in there. This is more common with the keratoconic fits, but it can be common if you're, it can occur if your fit is a little bit steep. And the trick with this is to fit a flatter base curve or increase the edge lift to increase the tear, tear flushing effect with blink. If we've got any apical staining, again, more common with keratoconic eyes, we need to make sure that we steepen the BOZR. We shouldn't be causing any abrasion stains between the contact lens and the eye. This can also be down to if it's a one-off, it can also be down to things being trapped underneath the contact lens. Punctate staining, generally caused by an allergy to the solution that the lens has been inserted with. So change that to either preservative-free drop or preservative-free saline. Other products that can be useful, and the cornea sclera lens is also available in a keratoconic specific geometry. So thanks for, thanks for watching. <laughs>